Well, for me, HomeBridge definitely bridged that gap with HomeKit. However, I've learned that you can do a lot more with it. So in this video, I'll show you five more tips that will make your life easier with HomeBridge. Plus as a bonus, I will also show you on how to test drive the beta versions of HomeBridge. So as an active HomeBridge community member, the software and its plugin just keep getting better and better. Their Reddit page boasts of 50,000 plus members and their Discord channel is buzzing with chatter and also solutions coming from the developers. So if you're not part of these communities, I highly recommend that you join them today. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. So these tips that we are going to see will allow you to get more out of HomeBridge. Avoid resetups, get detailed information when there are issues, plus enable an additional layer of authentication. It's all about making your life easy with HomeBridge. So for all of this to work, you can be running HomeBridge on your preferred platform. In my case, it is already installed in this Argon One case together with a Raspberry Pi 4. And don't worry, in the description, I've also left tutorials on how to set up HomeBridge. But before we start, I also have a bonus tip on how to test drive beta versions of HomeBridge and see what they have up their sleeves for future releases. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this tutorial. Okay, tip number one is auto install extra packages within HomeBridge. Did you know that HomeBridge comes with pre-installed packages that you can enable easily without copying and pasting any commands? So let's go and see how we can auto enable extra packages in HomeBridge. So we're going to first go into terminal. You can even do the same through PuTTY. And let's access the server, so SSH. Now to enable the extra packages, we need to go and run this command called manage HomeBridge. And you can see over here called extra packages. So when you click in it, these are the additional six packages that you can install automatically just by selecting any one of them. So you can install AdGuard, PyHole, Node-RED, Unify Controller, the Decons package, and even the real VNC server. So right from the moment you flash an SD card or an SSD card with HomeBridge, you're automatically having these extra packages not installed, but they can be installed by accessing the command that we just executed. So these are the extra packages you can install. And these are the ports that they are enabled on when they are installed. So tip number two is resetting and pairing of accessories plus resetting of bridges and also force restarting. So this is a good tip if you want to restart a specific device or an accessory. So to do that, we can go to admin and login and you want to go to HomeBridge settings and we can go all the way down to resetting. So over here, we can unpair bridges, cameras, TVs, external accessories. If you click on it now, you want to make sure those bridges or external accessories that are no longer active, you can delete them without any impact to HomeKit. So in my case, this WLED project is no longer active on my network. So you can go ahead and delete it. So for HomeBridge, this is no longer existing. It does not go and look for it or neither wants to report any status. So you're kind of helping HomeBridge to be more uh, productive in providing status to your devices correctly. So this is one. So you can go ahead and, and delete it and then you'll be asked if you want to re-add it again just in case if the device is available on your network. So you can close that. You can even go ahead and reset in HomeBridge accessory. Now, when you do this, you are basically generating a new QR code at the status uh, web page and you'll have to redo your entire HomeBridge setup. So this is the worst case scenario just in case things don't 
work for you. So if you had to click on that button, it would generate a new QR code for you to add into Homebridge. Now, if you go back to Homebridge settings, you can even do a force restart. So if your typical reboot or restart doesn't work from this command, you can force it from here. Now, tip number three is again within the same section is downloading a specific backup file. So you can download a recent backup file or any other backup file in the past time. And also Homebridge does it automatically. To access these files, you want to go to backup and restore and you can back up a current one that's active right now at this moment or you can go and back up a specific file that was done in, in the past time so these are all of the files and you and with their timestamps as well so you can go and click any of them now if you have any hiccups and uh, home bridge wasn't working properly you can access these files download it and do a complete restore so this allows you not to redo your entire home bridge setup but you can go and load a specific restore and saves you all the time to redo your entire setup now with tip number four again in the same place is enabling the debug mode now this is when in particular when you just install a plugin and it's not working as desired so if you want to get a true output of what the error is you have to enable this option so that the next time the service restarts it provides you a detailed output and you can use the same when opening up a github issue if it's for home bridge issue or for a plugin issue so let's go ahead and restart the service and click on status give it a couple of seconds and you see all of the additional data that we made available on the screen now once Homebridge service is restarted, all of the text that's not highlighted is part of all of the information of the debug mode. So let me go to the logs and you see all that's the detailed debug information that you're seeing over here. So if you didn't have that switch enabled, you wouldn't see all of this information. So with this, if you have any Homebridge issue or plugin issue, this is all that debug information that's being processed. And you can use this when opening up a issue um, to enhance home bridge service or even a plugin so very handy tool uh, to report and also makes your life much more easier to understand where the issue is but this is really require a good developer's talent to sweep and uh, through the, all of this data now tip number five is adding that additional layer of authentication by enabling us the two-factor authentication now if you want to set up two-factor authentication so that it creates an additional layer of to not allow anybody to access your home bridge instance you can do that by going to user accounts and within user accounts you click on setup 2fa and then you are presented to scan the qr code so you can use your own authenticator app in my case i will be using the google authenticator app i'm going to scan the qr code and you will see the code captured and it auto generates a code so once that is done you can go ahead and restart the home bridge service and when that's completed uh, you want to log in back into the page type in your username and credentials once that's completed you will be greeted to put in the authenticator two-factor authentication code so you have to open up your google authenticator app or one that you have used and put in that information so with that you have two-factor authentication and also enables you that additional layer of authentication if you don't want it you can go back and click on disable two-factor authentication and it reverts back to its original state of just using your username and password now the bonus tip if you are courageous and you want to experiment with newer versions of Homebridge when they are in the beta version, you can do that by going to your status web page, which is your dashboard, and you can click on this link over here and you're allowed to choose all the releases, past releases, or the ones that are in beta phase. So this allows you to test drive uh, what's going to be coming at next and if you're not sure what it is you can go to homebridge.io go to github 
click on releases and you can click on compare on the beta version and you will see that these are all of the changes that are coming in the next version that they are working on so if you would like to try and assist the community to test them so this is a an fantastic opportunity to add it and install it and if just in case if it doesn't work you can roll back to the production version that's the version 1.4.0 and also this version has already home kit secured um, feature enabled so it all depends on the plugin developers to use it and enable in the camera plugin or any other ones that are there and just like that these are my five more tips that will definitely make your life a lot more easier with Homebridge. And as a bonus, you also now know on how to test drive beta versions of it. Anyways, I have a list of Homebridge tutorials that you can use. So feel free to check them out. Don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe. And until the next time, my friends, have a nice day, stay safe and cheers.